Yo, what's going on guys? Today we are talking about the Apple Studio Display. Now, for whatever reason, this has kind of become a controversial piece of tech. Some people have some very strong opinions on it. And honestly, that's including myself. Now, I've had this thing since the day it launched, so I have some strong thoughts about it. So in today's video, what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the things I love about the Apple Studio Display, as well as the things I wish were maybe a little bit better or maybe a little bit different about the display as well. So I think you guys will find this video helpful, especially if maybe you're considering one of these for yourself. You're looking at the different specs or different versions versions and you're figuring out which one to get, this is the video for you and I hope you guys enjoy watching. If you do, be sure to drop this video a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well. It really helps me out. But enough chit chat, let's hop into the first thing that I wish was a little bit better about the Apple Studio display. So first up is the fact that this is a pretty expensive display. Now, no matter what the Apple product is, there's usually some sort of talk about the price tag. And I personally think there's reasons that kind of help justify the price of this, which we will get to later in this video. But the facts are, if you're looking at this, thing on paper, it comes in starting at $1,600 USD. And then on top of that, if you want the nano texture glass on the display, or even just a height adjustable stand, you're going to have to pay even more on top of that $1,600. But facts are facts. This thing is a pretty expensive display. So it definitely is kind of a point against the Apple Studio display. So the next thing I don't love about this display is the fact that it is only 60 Hertz. Now I was actually someone who was against 120 Hertz all the time, or at least I didn't really understand the hype about it. That is until I got an iPhone with 120 Hertz, the ProMotion, as well as the new M1 Max MacBook Pro. Now that I've had screens with 120 Hertz and that ProMotion, I've become spoiled and I wish I had that in every single display that I have. So is 60 Hertz a deal breaker for me? Currently, no, it's really not. And really I don't mind it way too much, especially especially with, you know, mostly doing photo or video editing on this display. But the biggest thing for me is this display, I want it to be able to last for multiple years or several years down the line. And I don't want this thing to become outdated in a year or two. And honestly, I could see that happening. So just something to think about there. And then there's actually one other little small thing that I don't like so much about this display is the fact that the power cord doesn't come out of the back. And that's just kind of a weird thing because, you know, if someone trips over it or if a dog chews it, things like that, you're gonna have to worry about getting it replaced through Apple. And it's kind of just a weird thing that I haven't really seen a power cord have to be plugged in before, at least not in a while. And then the last thing I don't love about this display is the fact that it's only 27 inches. Now I've had about every Apple computer that's come out in the last like 13 years. And I got my very first 27 inch iMac back in, I think it was 2011 or 2012 when I was actually working in the Apple store. And I know a lot of people think 27 inch is kind of the optimal screen size. Personally for myself, over the past couple of years, I've been using a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. And then previously before that, I had two monitors, you know, have a dual monitor setup. And again, being a creative professional, doing things like video editing in Premiere Pro, editing photos in Lightroom and Photoshop, things like that. I always like to have a lot of screen real estate. So personally, I'm okay with it not being an ultra wide, but I would have liked to see it be at least that 32 inch display like the Pro XDR. Again, is a deal breaker kind of depends for you. But actually how I've been using this quite often is I have the 27 inch monitor right here. Then I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro plugged into it using that display on the side as well. And actually it works out pretty good. So that's really it for the things I don't like so much about this display. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I actually do like quite a bit about it. So that list is going to be a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and hop into the things that I love about the Apple Studio display. So first up is the fact that this display looks amazing. And I'm not talking about the actual display with the pixels itself. I'm talking about the entire structure of the Apple Studio display itself. Now this might be important to you, it might not be important to you. I'm the type of person that if I'm going to invest a lot of money into something, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing, especially if it's going to be a big piece in my office or apartment or wherever it is. This isn't a cheap little tacky, ugly gaming monitor that's on your desk. This thing looks like a piece of art itself. It has clean lines, it's minimal, and it really does look good. And if you're familiar with my YouTube channel or my Instagram page, you know that aesthetics is important to me. So if I'm gonna spend money on something, I want it to look good, look good, feel good, play good. So I'm really happy that this thing looks awesome. So to piggyback off that, next up, I absolutely love the nano texture glass on this. Now I personally decided to opt in and get the nano texture glass over just the standard one, and I couldn't be happier about that. I heard some mixed reviews about it, or maybe people saying it wasn't worth it, but again, doing video and photo work and being in an office with a bunch of lights and filming things for YouTube or different social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, the viewing angle on this display with that texture looks so good. In case you don't know what the nano texture glass is, basically this voodoo magic going into the glass of this display where it has all these texture pieces. So basically just gives the display 
display a matte finish. So you're not gonna be getting any crazy reflections like you would on a standard display. And that's probably my favorite thing about this. Honestly, I am blown away by how good this display looks. Yes, the color, yes, the 5K image on this display looks great. That nano texture glass really kind of separates this from any other display out there, personally, at least in my opinion. So if you're in the creative field and you're kind of on the fence on if you think you should go for the nano glass or not, I strongly, strongly suggest it. I think it's well worth the money. All right, so the third thing that I love about this display, let me give you guys a little scenario real quick, okay? So if you buy another display out there, right? Like I have, I've bought ones off Amazon or gone to Best Buy or maybe Micro Center. I guarantee you can find one at a cheaper price. Sure, maybe it's made out of plastic, not metal, but I don't really care too much about that. But let me ask you a question. Whenever you have a monitor that you've bought from somewhere else before and something goes wrong with it, maybe a pixel goes out or maybe you accidentally break it or something just in general goes wrong with it, where do you take it? Well, again, that's one of the things I love about being in the Apple ecosystem is because if anything goes wrong with this display, I have a place I can take it to. I can take it to the Genius Bar at an Apple store, get it fixed quickly, or at least have someone to talk to probably within like the next couple days or at least the next week. And you can even get extended coverage with Apple Care and things like that on this. But that is a really big benefit, especially when you are using this thing as a professional. We're spending a lot of money on this thing. And personally for myself, I want this display to be able to last for multiple years. And I'm obviously going to take good care of it but if for whatever reason something decides to go wrong with this I have somewhere that I can physically take it into and I know they're going to be able to fix it or get a replacement for it and for me that's really important if you're talking about running a business or using this thing to make money for yourself so the next thing I love about the Apple studio display is its speakers now I'm not usually a big speakers person a lot of times I have my airpods in or different headphones but I'm seriously blown away by how good the speakers sound on this display <laughs> Music sounds really good on it, watching movies, watching TV shows, or like myself, if I'm watching back videos that I'm editing. Sure, having giant monitors on either side might make it a little bit more accurate, but I'm serious, I'm more than impressed by how good these speakers sound. I have absolutely no problem not using any external speakers on top of just the ones that are built into it. There's really not too much else to say about it, but I'm honestly really impressed. Now, the fifth and final thing I love about the Apple Studio display is the fact that it's going to match up very, very well with with other Apple displays. I'm talking MacBooks, iPads, and most importantly, iPhones. So I actually just looked this up to double check myself. So currently about 48% of people in the United States that use smartphones are using an iPhone. And we all know in this day and age, a lot of people consume their content on their phone. So even that other 50 or 52% of people out there, that's on a broad range of different smartphones, right? So I myself being in the content creation world for photo and video with the intent of people consuming that content, most likely on their iPhone, it's nice just knowing that I have a display that is going to match up well with everything else. So being in the content creation world for 10 plus years now and being parts of multiple different companies, bunch of different creative teams, being on hundreds of different shoots on different sets with thousands of different people, People, I would say 99.9% .9 of every single person I've ever done creative work with in any sort of capacity is doing that creative work on Apple products. That is the industry standard in the creative world and that is just a fact. If you disagree, I don't really know what to tell you. And obviously I know not everyone out there is using Apple displays and that's totally okay. But if I can at least know what about 50% of the default is going to be, knowing that it's gonna match up pretty well with whatever I'm editing on this display and also just personally on my own devices, then I'm really happy about that. So that's just my strong opinion on it. And hopefully this point doesn't make too many people upset. All right guys, so that's really it as far as the things I love and the things I don't like so much about the Apple Studio display. All in all, I personally think it's worth the investment Investment. I plan on having this thing for a really long time. I believe it was Chris Howell who dropped the video on this display and I think he put it in really good words. He was saying that a monitor to a computer is similar how a lens is to a camera body. A lot of times the lenses are really expensive but those are going to outlive the camera body so whenever you replace the camera body over time you're still going to have those lenses. People will have those for seriously like 10 or plus years. 
but maybe swap out the camera body, you know, every three to five years. And I think that's a perfect analogy because I think displays work that same exact way. This thing should honestly last, I would say seven to 10 years. And even that last iteration of Apple displays that came out, what, like seven or eight years ago, I know a ton of different creators that are still using that because it's one of the best options out there when you're in the Apple ecosystem. That was at my last job, that was at my current job. That's how it's been on different production sets I've been part of. So at the end of the day, things are going to always look a certain way on paper, but whenever you use them in real life and whenever you just need something to work or be reliable, that's always gonna be a little bit of a different story. So in case you're wondering which monitor I ended up getting for myself and which one I would recommend, I just got the standard stand. I didn't get the height adjustable. I personally thought that extra money would be a better investment with the nano texture glass. And I personally think it was the perfect decision, especially if you're a content creator, I can't stress how much I like this nano texture glass. And I know this monitor isn't cheap, but I personally think I'm gonna be having this thing for I would think the next five to eight years, unless they come out with something crazy and then I'll probably just trade this in or sell it. And I guarantee this is gonna hold its value too. But guys, that is gonna be it for me. Be sure to drop me any questions that you have about the display that maybe I didn't cover down in the comments below. If you did enjoy today's video, will you please drop it a thumbs up? If you're new around here, consider subscribing. It really helps me and the channel out more than you can even imagine. And I will catch you guys in the next video very, very soon. Peace guys.